My sisters and brothers, good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception and welcome to this pre-recorded Mass for Sunday, the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Father Ron Catani and let us begin as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness, and grant us your salvation. 
compassion. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him, and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and preceded him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why do you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my sisters and brothers, once again, good morning. Our readings today talk to us about our faith and they ask the question, what is it that defines our faith? In the first reading, Elijah is on the same mountain that Moses received the Ten Commandments. He's waiting for God to pass by. And how does God pass by? Not in the powers of the earth, wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a tiny whisper. The key here is that God has given Elijah the power to discern the sounds in his life, to find the ultimate value in his life, a value not in the things of the world, but in the things of the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom that is worth everything and that demands everything. So what defines Elijah's faith? Perhaps the answer lies in his name. Elijah means Yahweh is God. By his very name, Elijah is acknowledging his ultimate value, who he is 
as a person in relation to God. The prophet Elijah stood up boldly before God in a time when idolatry had swept his land. Under God's guidance, Elijah struck a heavy blow against the evil of false gods. He was an instrument for miracles against Israel's idolaters. Elijah had incredible faith in God. He loyally carried out the Lord's instructions and struck boldly in the face of enormous opposition. And it's his faith that allows him today to find the true peace that he finds in his relationship with God and in that silent moment. He, he wants, he ultimately finds his value in life, the whisper of God, that God is Yahweh. In his letter to the Romans, Paul is grieving because many of the Jews are rejecting salvation through Jesus. Because they are God's chosen people, Paul wants the best for them, even to the point of being damned himself to save them. Paul's faith defines him by what he does. In the gospel, Peter finds his ultimate faith in the outstretched hand of Jesus. Jesus comes to the disciples in the storm. He's walking on water and invites Peter to walk towards him. As long as Peter is focused on Jesus, he's fine. But when he focuses on his limitations, he sinks. And it's the hand of Jesus that saves him. Where is Peter's faith? Is it focused on the one true God or on the laws of science? How about you and me? Are you an Elijah or a Peter? The hand of Jesus is always open to us to lead us and give us the grace for the journey. If we have the faith of Paul and Jesus and the faith of Elijah in the unseen, rather than the faith of Peter in only what is seen. The purpose of the gospel is to bring us to faith. When Jesus comes to the apostles walking on the stormy waters of the lake, they, he does it so that they might believe. Jesus wants his followers to believe that the loving care of God for his children can penetrate our physical world of tiny boats and stormy lives. And that there is ultimately no barrier between heaven and earth when faith is active. Belief in him ultimately overcomes the laws of science. And it's this miracle that prompts the disciples to proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God. So what defines your faith? Do you believe even in what you've not seen like Elijah? Is your relationship with Jesus your most prized possession like Paul? And do the miracles in your daily life ultimately define your faith like they did for Peter? As you answer these questions, remember, faith is our response to God. And Jesus comes to us in the storms of our life if we do not let the clamor in the world drown out what he whispers in our heart. And it's our faith that allows us to see his hand in that storm, the, the, the hand that draws us closer to him, moving our heart closer to his sacred heart. May God bless you and keep you. Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions as we pray for our Holy Father, for the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the seminarians, the consecrated religious, and those contemplating a religious life. For them, we pray to the Lord. For our government leaders, for civil servants in the military, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our 
Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and for immigrants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are affected by and participation, participating in the solutions to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions to act upon according to your providential will. We offer all of them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts and we prepare the altar. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and Jorge, as assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, we want to thank you for being with us for this broadcast mass. We want to remind you that this is the 52nd or 53rd year of this broadcast mass. And um, it, during that time, it's been the largest viewed program on public television here in Denver. So we thank you for your support. We thank you for the support that you give to the Catholic Foundation for this broadcast to be possible. I want to also invite you to join me in supporting the Archbishop's Catholic Appeal. Each year, the Archbishop's Catholic Appeal supports over 40 ministries in the Archdiocese of Denver, including Catholic schools, the Black Catholics Office, the Hispanic program, Catholic programs, um, senior housing, affordable housing, uh, women's shelters, women's health programs, a variety of programs. And if you haven't been a direct beneficiary of that, those programs, my guess is you don't have to look very far in your life to find someone who's been a beneficiary. So we encourage you to support the Catholic Appeal by contacting the Archdiocese of Denver. Once again, thank you for being with us today here at the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. And most importantly, thank you for your love of our Blessed Mother. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mata Misericordiae, Vita Ruceo, Espes Nostra Sole, Ad Eclamamus, Exulas Filiere, Ad Te Suspiramus, Gementes Atlantes, In Hag Lacrimarum.